Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm assuming you are a Fisker owner, or an enthusiast, or an interested party. Uh, maybe somebody who wants to make fun of the uh, industry's worst key fob. Uh, all are welcome, uh, but we are going to be solution-oriented here. We are going to repair this key fob. It was chewed up by a puppy, and the owner uh, had their car stranded, and it had to be towed back where it underwent a, a, a software OTA update, and then the battery was killed. Just a bunch of stuff happened, uh, but we're going to get it back on the road here. Um, I want to preface with a few uh, things about the repair. One is that this is not something that should be necessary. Um, the FAST program, that's FAST Fisker After Sales Service Tool, uh, much like uh, a Rivian's ride program or Tesla's toolbox software, this would enable us to simply program the new key fob, uh, which the customer supplied to me. We cannot do that, so what we're going to be doing is identifying every uh, tiny component that gives the key fob its identity and hard swap or clone that over to the new key fob. We're going to be doing that through a process known as micro soldering. I won't be getting into exactly what you need, uh, all the equipment and tools and process for this. This is just to show what you know can be done when push comes to shove. Um, once you get down to it, even a software-based car is going to be nuts and bolts and wires in the end. Uh, so this is uh, going to work out great, you'll see, and uh, let's go ahead and hop to it. First things first, let's take a look at our situation. We are cracked out, clapped out, cattywampus, towed here next to a dumpster. We're getting tow notices. Um, those are always a pain to scrape off the windows. Uh, we are uh, unlocked. We have a window down. Um, not great. No cover in Oregon. Getting rained in. It's dirty. Um, and... The 12 volt battery is reading at two and a half volts. Some kind of roadside assistance person messed up the hood. Uh, that's all damaged and it's going to be need to be straightened out. This can be seen, but we're going to fix all this. All right, let's uh, have a look at my approved battery for the Fisker Ocean. This is the Die Hard EV 12 volt. You can get it from Advance Auto Parts. Uh, often they're in stock. Often they have to be ordered, but uh, they can get them e easily. The uh, code here is H4-XEV, and we've got good CCA and amp hours. Who doesn't love their new little puppy dog? Um, that may be the case, but you probably want to keep away your extremely hard-to-obtain, um, fantastic quality Fisker key fob. I'm sure it came apart with just a few bites here. And we are having a look at what exactly uh, is missing, what was maybe uh, digested by our friend here, or is chewed up to smithereens. And we're also going to identify the components. There's going to be three that need to be swapped over that give this key fob its identity. Um, so what we're missing are really just one MOSFET and some dumb chips and the windings for the NFC antenna. Those are all shorted out, uh, so this key fob is not going to work, um, nor will the NFC. But luckily, everything uh, is there. On the other side of it, we've got the NFC chip, and on this side, we have those two black squares. Those are uh, one, the larger one, that's the Bluetooth controller, and the other one is the RFID. Here on the flip side, you can see, um, I'm not pointing to it at this point in the video, but at the bottom, you have that little winged chip that's your NFC connected to all the uh, windings that go around and around. All right, let's uh, move on to our repair. So it was a long day at work and I just wanted to get this project done afterwards. As you're gonna see, my hands are filthy. This is not ideal when you do this kind of work. You want to try and keep things, all contaminants out of the solder joints. I was instead just careful not to touch anything um, that was going to be going back on the key fob. So here's a nice shot of my 
a greasy finger um, holding one of the old microcontrollers that is removed from the replacement fob and that's going to be discarded um, maybe I'll keep it around and, and reuse it and for something but that is going to be replaced from the old chewed up one to give it its identity the way it works in a nutshell is that I use what's called a hot air rework station to heat up uh, each of the three microchips until the solder is melted uh, you'll see it the microcontroller start to get jittery and nervous under the under the heat and you know that it's ready to be plucked out with a set of tweezers flip it upside down clean up the solder clean up the solder on the board add new solder and heat it back on and it'll snap right into place we're going to do that with the bluetooth microcontroller the rfid microcontroller and transmitter and the nfc tag itself so two of those are on uh, the two black squares on one side of the key fob and the NFC is the small one on the uh, bottom of the other side of the key fobs PCB. Once that's done we're going to use a machine that will wash the new key fob, remove all of the flux that we used and it will be ready to go back into its housing and slap the battery in there and everything will work. All right, the key is mailed USPS priority back to the customer. And out of the box, here we are, we're rescued. The car still had a 60% state of charge in the high voltage battery, and we're cruising around the parking lot just making sure all is well. We'll follow up again later. And thank you for watching this video.